Hi everyone, my name is Teja and welcome to this video series on probability refresher for business analytics and machine learning. So in this video, we're going to quickly look at a couple of examples to further ground our you know, uh, notion of probability that we introduced uh, in the previous uh, video. So I'm going to describe two settings. One is going to be the discrete setting. It just means that I my sample space is going to be, uh, you know, consist of a few numbers or a finite uh, set of numbers. So let's say, uh, for example, my sample space is, uh, um, has 10 numbers, 1, 2, all the way to 10, okay? So that's my sample space. And let's say each element here is, is the outcome, right? Um, so let's say each outcome is equally likely. So when I say each out outcome is equally likely, I'm actually describing, this is equal to describing this P function. So this is a function, okay? It's equal to describing this P function, which is our probability, or uh, which is our belief function, or the probability function, okay? And this uh, probability function is gonna let us uh, reason about events. Uh, for example, let's say, uh, equally likely is, is a specific function, for example, the probability of uh, this outcome is uh, 1 by 10 because there are 10 outcomes and each one is equally likely and similarly probability of uh, 10 is also 1 by 10 okay and so if we have an event e which is uh, let's say 1 2 and 3 this is a subset of uh, omega right and uh, if it has three outcomes, then the probability of event E, if, you know, because the outcomes are this, this uh, distinct uh, and uh, let's say uh, mutually exclusive. So this is nothing but this is equal to three by 10. Okay. And you saw that from the third uh, bullet point in the axioms uh, of probability, right? So, so this is uh, an example of a discrete setting where I described the sample space, I described an event, I described uh, this our beliefs, which is encoded in this equally likely statement, uh, right? And I then ascribed or computed uh, the probability uh, of an event of our interest, okay? Now, let's look at a, a continuous version of this setting, uh, continuous setting. So by the way, this is called uh, a disc the discrete uniform uniform because of equally likely setting. And we're gonna look at the continuous setting. Again, uh, uh, something to do with equally likely. So we'll also call uniform setting. Uh, what do I mean by this? Um, continuous setting. So think of uh, the probability as being uh, a, a, the belief about a bunch of points. So let's say our points are only going to be between uh, 0, 1. So this is the coordinate system 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1, right? This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So let's say, uh, so there's, one, there's lots of points in here. In fact, there are infinite number of points here. So what if I ask you, uh, so this region, shaded region is an event, okay? Each point is an outcome and uh, this is, a, is this shaded region is an event. So I'm asking, so the whole square, let's say, the probability of that the square, uh, which is in our case the omega, is the same as omega, is one. So probability of this event, which is a shaded region, uh, you can see if uh, my belief about this uh, sample space is this, you know equally likely or uh, uniform, then the probability of this event is just going to be the area of E. Okay. The area of that uh, omega is is one because uh, height and uh, uh, length are one, length and width are one. So a probability of E is going to be um, one half times one half is equal to one fourth, okay? So that's the way I'm going to assign uh, uh, 
uh, my beliefs to events. Uh, and there's also a subtlety in this setting is that I cannot ascribe a probability to a point. For example, let's say the point is uh, one fourth and three fourth. Okay, so it's somewhere over here, three fourth, somewhere over here at this point. So the probability of, uh, let's say this point, uh, I cannot ascribe a number to it. So I'm gonna, I, I cannot ascribe a non-zero number to it uh, because if I ascribe a non-zero number to the points here, the infinite number of points, they need to sum to uh, one, right? Because the probability of the whole um, uh, space, sample space is one. So there is some issue with summations. Uh, but uh, that is for, a, uh, I guess, a different discussion. So here, what we're gonna do is in continuous settings, we're gonna glide over this technicality and generally talk about uh, sets as like regions uh, in the sample space. And so if there are regions, then we're gonna look at areas or volumes or things of that nature, for example. Here, okay. So, but first, let's ground the uh, basic workflow. So, what? How are you going to work with uh, uh, probability in a in a typical um, application scenario? So, what we need to do is to first, uh, you know, this is the workflow. I mean, not all workflows are going to be like this, but many of them are like this. So, you have to describe uh, the sample space. This will depend on the experiment or the real world setting, you know, a system or surveys that you're gonna, you know, look at this. So the real world is gonna inform you of what the sample space is. And uh, then we're gonna somehow use measurements to describe our beliefs. So beliefs, which is this P function. So we're gonna describe the sample space. Maybe we'll collect data from the sample space and uh, use statistics to figure out a belief uh, that we can uh, attach to the sample space, okay? And once we do that, and this is of course uh, uh, highly non-trivial, this is where most of the machine learning uh, technique comes in. Uh, for example, if you build a linear regression model, it attaches a belief to a sample space, appropriate sample space, uh, but let's not uh, worry about what that sample space is right here. So, so once we do this, this is uh, stats or ML models part. Uh, once we uh, attach this belief, so the probability function, then we can uh, identify a, an event, for example, of interest, uh, let's say E. And then we can now compute uh, uh, the probability of E, okay? And this is a computation And this computation may itself be, you know, may involve summations or things of that nature. And that's why we saw summations earlier. So, so this is uh, key. Uh, so this is going to be informed from the uh, application, as in the domain, uh, domain knowledge. And this is going to be informed from the domain knowledge as well. Even this part, beliefs, can also be domain knowledge based. For example, if I have a coin, maybe I'll believe that, you know, it, if I flip the coin, me getting a heads is the same as me getting a tails, as in the, they're equally likely, the, that uniform discrete case that we saw earlier. So it could also be informed using domain knowledge or using data, okay? So it's data versus domain knowledge. I mean, it may not be all these verses. It can be data and domain knowledge informing what the, what my beliefs are about outcomes, and then uh, and then I can deal with my event of interest. Uh, if I can ascribe the probability of the you know, if I can compute the probability of an event, for example, what is the probability that tomorrow the stock market is going to crash, or uh, you know, the stock of a particular um, uh, uh, company is going to rise or fall? That would be an event of interest, and maybe I can compute that probability. And if it's high or low, I can maybe do something about it. Okay. So, so this is the workflow. Uh, the elephant in the room is, uh, is this uh, um, well, well grounded and uh, what does the belief even mean? Okay, so let's just look at, just revisit uh, the interpretation of P. Okay, we have been uh, kind of uh, hand-wavily saying that this is uh, the belief about outcomes. So 
it's very it's not really clear what this belief is for example a probability of let's say heads is equal to one half uh, does it mean that i believe that if i flip the coin uh, it's going to land uh, heads with probability one half as in you know it's going to uh, uh, land uh, heads with probability one half or am i saying that if i um, flip the coin a thousand times 500 times i'll get uh, heads okay so that's uh, there's a frequentist interpretation that you can attach which is using frequencies that you know maybe i did a did an experiment 100 times 1000 times and i got the heads 500 times but you can't do this for some of these events right what is the likelihood that for example uh, what is the probability or my belief that uh, uh, for example uh, tomorrow you know there's going to be self driving cars everywhere okay so that's not going to that cannot be repeated uh, repeated 100 times right uh, 1000 times so in a way, uh, there's some interpretation. Sometimes some settings allow you to interpret uh, these beliefs as, uh, you know, frequency-based uh, beliefs that you run something 100 times, uh, maybe 50 times, it's hence. Uh, but sometimes you cannot do that. Uh, but overall, uh, I would say this is a language to uh, reason consistently about the world in this case when i say about the world a specific application uh, setting that you're thinking of uh, via a model okay uh, and when i say a model i'm talking about exactly that you know once i uh, for example me saying that outcomes are equally likely is a model so this model is essentially this p function that I can, for example, use machine learning techniques to figure an equivalent of this out. And once I do that, then I can reason consistently about uh, the world. For example, uh, if uh, you know stock price is gonna rise tomorrow, then stock price falling tomorrow is gonna be somehow consistent in the sense if, if the rise is gonna happen, you know, the probability of uh, stock price rising is 0.7, then the probability of um, stock price falling is maybe one minus 0.7, maybe 0.3, okay? So it's a little bit, you know, it imposes consistency. It's a language to reason about the world, uh, but it's not the only language. So there are other languages. When I say language, uh, there are other approaches to also reason about the world, uh, which sometimes uh, you know are maybe simpler. For example, uh, deterministic ways of modeling certain worlds. For example, if you want to uh, um, you know, uh, if you want to uh, uh, look at uh, how does a projectile's trajectory go once, uh, uh, for example, if you if you launch a projectile into into uh, um, if you throw a ball, for example, you know how high it's going to go, how far it's going to go, uh, what is its speed, and uh, maybe even acceleration. Uh, those things can be potentially modeled. Uh, model using, uh, for example, differential equations. Okay. What are called ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, and so on. So uh, that's a different way of uh, describing the world, uh, you know, capturing how the world behaves, and then reason about, OK, if I throw a projectile twice the weight, then what's going to happen? That maybe you can reason about uh, such things. So it doesn't really require uh, this notion of probability. There's also other things like, uh, for example, causal inference. Uh, requires a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, uh, terminology and uh, uh, more techniques. And, and probability itself is uh, not sufficient to uh, describe causal effects that, uh, you know, A causes B or B is affected by A. Uh, these types of statements uh, may require uh, more modeling tools, or more more hammers, or more tools than just uh, just the axioms of probability that we described and, and the workflow that we described earlier. Okay, so anyway, that's for just a larger discussion. Uh, uh, thank you for watching this video.